Black Ops 6 Zombies is better than Black Ops 3 Zombies. That's coming from a Black Ops 3 Zombies fanboy who always defends the game. What's going on guys? How are you meatballs? I'm going to be talking about that and more within this video where I highlight what I think is good about Black Ops 6 Zombies, what I think is maybe all right, and what I don't really like about it, what I think maybe needs some adjusting, not just because I think it, but giving you actual reasons behind it, and also just seeing what the community has said. But let me know really quickly down below in the comments what you think about Black Ops 6 Zombies, one thing you love and one thing that you would change about this game we're starting to come out of the honeymoon phase where you can start to potentially see some flaws in the game or gameplay and i can say with certainty that i feel like i'm good at pulling myself out of that no matter what in my opinion really hasn't changed from launch i still think this game is fantastic there are just minor things that may need to be adjusted to make it almost perfect quick message from this video sponsor damn mods with damn mods get the quickest and safest highly trusted by trust pilot with five stars call of duty boosting services and accounts for all platforms unlock dark ether abyss nebula max out all weapon levels, play in bot lobbies, get some zombie stuff, and so much more. Check out Damn Mods with the link in the description and use code JOMET for up to $100 off. Alright, so now taking a look at Black Ops 6 Zombies, we have Terminus and we have Liberty Falls. Terminus is the main full-fledged zombies experience with a zombified kind of area that's darker. We have a nice full main easter egg quest with a decent amount of steps, two different boss fights, the final one being one of the better ones ever in all of Call of Duty Zombies. I didn't say the best, but one of, you know, definitely a top 10, possibly even a top top six, top five, but we have that map, tons of side Easter eggs, and then we have Liberty Falls, which doesn't really look like much of a zombies map. That complaint is still very valid from people in the community, but in all honesty, despite me being an atmosphere sucker and thinking that atmosphere still at this point in time, still believing this, that atmosphere is one of the most important aspects of a zombies map. I can go into Liberty Falls, I can shoot some zombies, I can get the jet gun, I can do the Easter egg, I can do some side Easter eggs, I can open the vault, I can do these side things, and I can still have fun. So we're going to be talking about the overall product within Black Ops 6 Zombies and explaining, or I'll be explaining, why I honestly think it's fantastic and why I believe it easily could be Black Ops 3 Zombies with no problem. Do I think it's there right now? No, but, but, this is a very big one, I think it already beats Cold War Zombies. Black Ops 6 Zombies is better than Cold War Zombies already. If you give me Black Ops 6 Zombies in its current state right now compared to Black Ops Cold War in its current state right now, I will take Black Ops 6 Zombies every single time. Now, the main reason just is because I think Liberty Falls is equivalent to almost every single map in Cold War. If we look at Firebase Z, I would not stamp that or authorize that as a real zombies-esque atmosphere. And sure, I think it's more of a zombies-esque atmosphere than Liberty Falls, but at the end of the day, I'd rather use the jet gun than use the Ray K. That may just be me, but that's, that's just how I feel. Furthermore, I just like the Black Ops 6 Zombies mechanics a little bit better. I like the way certain things work in Black Ops 6 Zombies a little bit better. And I think with some of the adjustments that I'm going to propose in this video, I think that any shadows of doubt in my mind will immediately be gone, meaning I think Black Ops 6 zombies will even though it right now in my head easily clears cold cold war i think it'll fully clear cold war and that's just with the two maps we have on launch and again i'm only saying liberty falls is pretty much equivalent to any other map we have in cold war sure malware Toten is a fantastic looking map in cold war zombies it is my favorite map in cold war zombies i think it's the best map in cold war zombies and i would easily put that i would i, I think i'd put that above liberty falls i'm pretty sure i would say that with certainty but now malware is topped by terminus and that makes this irrelevant and the goal of this really is to compare games it's just to talk about what's good what's bad what's all right but this is just to kind of give you perspective on how i may view certain things so if you maybe disagree with me on certain things you'd at least get an understanding of where i'm coming from so right off the bat like i said we level the field by saying liberty falls is about the same as every map in cold war with the exception of malward or Toten, which i would say is easily beaten by terminus now if we look at this overall game black Ops six zombies and we see that we have terminus and we have liberty falls again we have a great contrast between this one full-fledged darker kind of a little bit more scarier slightly more zombified area with a full easter egg full boss fight and we have this more casual map we can kind of go over to black ops 3 zombies now and look at shadows of evil compared to the giant and although those maps serve slightly different purposes for that period of time i still think it's fair to say that the giant was the casual map to the complex map shadows of evil and that's exactly what liberty falls is here with the exception of liberty falls has like i said a full main easter egg and a decent amount of side easter egg slash side things to do and i don't know where i'd rate liberty falls compared to the giant because they really is almost like comparing apples to oranges to the survival map compared to a map with an easter egg but if somebody told me they put liberty falls over the giant i'd probably say you know i kind of agree but that's irrelevant again it's the contrast that this map provides to the main full-fledged map the giant was perfect at giving contrast to shadows of evil as a 
is Liberty Falls is fantastic at giving contrast to Terminus. All right, so now we've covered the base. We talked about Cold War, those maps, Mauer or Toten, how I think that correlates to Liberty Falls and Terminus. We talked about Black Ops 3 in the comparison to the Giant and Shadows of Evil with Terminus and Liberty Falls with the casual and hardcore aspects. It's time to get a little bit more specific now. So first things first, one thing that I don't like about Black Ops 6 Zombies is that we have bosses returning from older games. Now, though I feel like they find ways in a sense to keep them fresh, they still are the same bosses. Like I don't want to see the Mangler again that I've seen since Black Ops 3 Zombies for nearly 10 years. I don't want to see the abomination that I saw in Cold War Zombies and Modern Warfare Zombies even. It's just ridiculous to me that we're seeing the same bosses over and over and over again. It almost feels like a mobile game with boss spam. And on top of that, really quickly, when you go for higher rounds in this game, bosses are spammed at you like crazy. And we have to immediately say there is a massive difference between difficulty and tediousness. This means that on higher rounds, if you were to throw 8,000 abominations at me, and let's make this a hypothetical situation, but say in a zombies game, if you were to throw these bigger, heavier bosses that take tons of bullets to kill, and although they may be fun, it may be nice to have bosses to mix stuff up. But if you're going to throw a bunch of these bosses at me in comparison to just throwing more zombies at me, sure, they may both di either directly or indirectly increase difficulty, but one of those options is going to be significantly more tedious than the other. And if you're throwing tons of massive bosses at me that just take tons of bullets to kill and they really kind of interrupt the flow of the gameplay, that's where problems start to come in. Whereas again, if you give me more zombies, even if they run a little bit faster, that definitely increases difficulty. Now, I think that super sprinters, like I'm talking about the ones that even with stamina up can still kind of hit you. I think those are kind of tedious as well, but that's a completely different level than the boss spam we're seeing in Black Ops 6 Zombies. Like if you go to even like round 40, you're going to be getting tons of manglers and crap thrown at you. It's just not the way to go. That is not increased difficulty. That is, yes, maybe increased difficulty, but with tons of increased tediousness added on. And as a player, that's not what you want, right? You want a challenge, but not something that's going to literally fry your brain from doing. And I can't say that my proposal is to just remove the bosses because I know they want to keep them in. And I know they do because they did this in Cold War as well. But let's reduce the amount of bosses that spawn in. And now that in Black Ops 6 Zombies, they've returned these popcorn type of enemies with the spiders and with the bugs, the parasites. Spawn in more of those in the round. Do I find them annoying? Yes, but that's the point of them. Make them deal a little bit less damage and allow them to hit me while the zombies are coming around. And that will definitely increase difficulty in the game. Is, is that going to be a little bit annoying? Yes, but it won't be tedious in the sense of, okay, I have to dump every single magazine into this mangler to kill it. Oh, and then I have six other ones I have to kill. And then there's an abomination. Like it's just a project to do. And I don't want to do that. Whereas if I have just zombies and a couple of these popcorn enemies, like the spiders and or the parasites, I can kill them while I'm killing the zombies. I don't have to reserve them for the end of the round to kill. Do you understand what I'm saying? They flow with the gameplay. And that's very important to me. And probably to you as well. You may not even realize it, but if you just think about it, do you really want to wait until the end of the round to kill the bosses at the end of every round? That's freaking annoying. So again, my proposal would be to reduce the amount of bosses, put them if you want, maybe one per round even if you want. But this 9, 10, 11, whatever the hell's going on is not it. Throw in some more popcorn enemies, maybe reduce the amount of damage they deal to you. This way they can mess with you a little bit, but it makes for a lot more of a flowy gameplay experience, if that makes sense. Now, the next issue I would really want to talk about is the points and or the weapon damage. Now, I've even seen people talk about this on Twitter, and I'm not exactly sure how the numbers work out. But if you have a tier three gold weapon, just like in Cold War Zombies, that weapon typically deals pretty solid damage damage. And that's great. But there's just something about this game. And who knows, maybe double tap will come in at some point in time. And I can definitely see that happen. It could solve a lot of problems. But even then on the lower rounds and actually real quick, before we get into this, I think an amazing thing they did in, in this game at Black Ops 6 Zombies is that if you're using any weapon in the game, as opposed to Cold War Zombies, any weapon that you have in its gray rarity, you will have to get rid of by round six, seven, eight, the latest, like eight's a real push. All the weapons get weak. All the spawn weapons, the slash the gray weapons, they all get weak by round seven, I'll say. And I love that because if you guys know I'm more of a classical zombies type of fan, I would like to start with a starting pistol only, and then you work your way up from there. However, in this game, they kind of completely changed my mind on it because I was looking at these previous games where they did it, including Cold War Zombies, where we had the rarity system, and I just don't think it worked out as good as, as it could have. People say just spawn in with a pistol if you want, but that's a really dumb argument because if I have the option, why would I limit myself? But if we're all starting at the same point, then it makes sense, and that's exactly exactly what I love about this new starting weapon system, the new weapon rarity system, is that, like I said, those gray weapons, they're good initially, but they weaken quite a bit over the first couple of rounds, and you're forced to either upgrade the weapon rarity, so you're taking advantage 
of the systems directly within this game or get a new weapon so you have to hit the box or buy a wall weapon you're forced to make decisions that's fantastic i love that that's back in this game and sure there may be some kind of route or rhyme or reason that you follow every single game to overcome this problem but the fact that it even exists allows leeway for something to happen something different to happen maybe one game you decide all right i'm gonna hit the box maybe you one game you decide all right i'll get this wall weapon even if you traditionally follow the same pattern in most of your games now there are more possibilities open and i love that so again i was kind of talking about why i don't love or what i don't love about the rarity system and that just really is the fact that the gold tier 3 weapons feel significantly better than everything else and then the kind of green blue purple rarities feel weird and this kind of goes back to the tedious thing i want increased challenge in zombies but not at the expense of tediousness and for me shooting thousands of bullets into zombies to kill them obviously i'm being over dramatic i'm just fluffing this up a little bit but shooting tons of bullets into zombies isn't necessarily my favorite thing to do and i'm not saying that every zombie has to be an insta kill but i think in cold war zombies they had that balance set pretty well so what i would propose is that we kind of keep weapons the way they are tier 3 gold pack a punch because they seem to deal decent damage maybe some weapons may need a buff or a nerf depending on the weapon i don't know and haven't used every single weapon in the game at tier 3 gold but i love the way the gray weapons work so i would say possibly leave gray and gold alone and then we work on green and blue and purple and work on some kind of changes with them to make them maybe a little bit more powerful because within this game and now tying this into the point system like i said we would since you don't kill as quickly you go through ammo pretty quickly which isn't a problem because you have ammo crates but since you don't earn points too quickly you're going to run out of points buying ammo so you get stuck in a vicious cycle and it takes you forever to set up and it's kind of tedious and they are so close like like if they left it the way it is my level of concern is very low because i still think everything is pretty good but i think that they're just one minor change away from making this perfect so again my proposal would be just a small buff to each of the green blue and purple rarities and or i think the thing that would make the biggest difference especially on the higher rounds not even higher just like them even the medium tier rounds because you have to consider and you know that i am not the biggest advocate for the casual player like i said i'm a hardcore player and hardcore players have been getting snuffed over the last few years until now it feels like they really have been starting to do a really good job of catering to everyone which i'm loving but you have to remember that not every single person is going to be able to stay alive and just not down and i understand that there's augments and field upgrades and different things that can be used to kind of negate some of the effects of going down and or dying but i just feel like right now you're penalized a little bit too much for dying so if they were to buff the amount of points you were to earn which i really think is the most practical solution i think they can leave everything alone i think the salvage earn rate is fine i think that that kind of ranks up properly with rounds but just getting one weapon that you spawn in with to tier three pack a punch is a lot to ask as you're open up door opening up doors as well it kind of takes away your incentive to hit the box or buy wall weapons or to experiment with anything like that because you're going to be out of points so quickly and sure these maps have tons of side easter eggs like i explained that could get you more points potentially but it's not that much really that's going to make a difference and i don't want that to be really part of this discussion because that's not the core gameplay right one of the biggest things that makes black ops 3 zombies so good especially the custom maps is because its base is so good that it just plays well in almost everything you play it on and like i said i think we're so close to that here in black ops 6 zombies the true solution for me is to just buff the amount of points you get so right now i think you earn 115 points per headshot how about we earn 130 points per headshot and i think you earn less points for meleeing than you do for headshotting which is a little bit strange but whatever it is what it is but let's buff all the point tiers a body shot a headshot a melee kill let's buff every single point tier this way you're earning slightly more weapons i'm not even proposing that we bring back the og point system as much as i would love that i don't even think that's needed let's just buff the amount of points we're getting in the game right now ever so slightly and i think that would much help with buying perks a little bit more faster having an insurance safety net just in case you down making life a little bit less stressful i think would make life a little bit less tedious as well because you'd be able to upgrade your weapons a little bit faster right one of the limiting factors for the average person who's not speed running the terminus easter egg is going to be setting up and setting up takes a really long time because the amount of points you earn the amount of doors there are and i don't think it's a bad thing to have it take time to set up it's just that it's almost inflated in a way right 
you're just earning points so slowly that you can you get everything done so early that you have to spend rounds setting up which is always the case but it just feels more inflated in this game because of the amount of points you earn so some kind of miniature and i'm talking ever so miniature point buff maybe even in conjunction with a slight rarity damage buff to the green blue purple tiers would be absolutely perfect and i i, I really think that that would set this game in the most perfect spot it could possibly be in. and i'm almost grasping at straws right now looking for things to say bad about this game because i really do think terminus is easter egg is phenomenal i think the boss fight is phenomenal i think liberty falls provides great contrast i talked about all these things right but at the end of the day this is still part of the core gameplay and you notice it every single game even though you may be having fun and you may be able to do certain things and you may be able to go up a couple of rounds and it doesn't seem like that big of an issue because it's not that big of an issue but it's nagging just a little bit you know oh i gotta go another round to pack a bunch of this weapon this that the other thing and i'm not again i'm not all for handing stuff out to people i'm not saying we have to get the og point system back i'm not saying any of that just minor tunes this way instead of you know for the again for the average person which includes hardcore people but also casuals the average player so you don't have to get half the easter egg done or most of the easter egg done maybe in terminus for example on like round 10 or 12 maybe even 14 and then wait until 20 when you're tier 2 pack a punched in purple to do the nathan boss fight to then do the rest of the steps right the goal is to remove as much tediousness and headache as possible and again i think that they've really done a great job at bringing back decision making in its own new way in this game and in fact by doing what i said i think it would add to the decision making because by giving people slightly more points they'll be more inclined to hit the box they'll be they'll actually have to make the decision do i actually you know if, if i if i hit this box for 950 points i know i can kill this many zombies which is a little bit more than i used to be able to before this new update right at the let's say a theoretical situation you know i can hit the box right now i can get a weapon i can take a chance on the box to get a weapon and if i don't get what i want whatever i can get these points back semi quickly but more quickly than before so it's not as big of a headache or you know what maybe this game i'm gonna try out this weapon in the boss fight or i'm gonna try out this weapon for this or whatever it may be right maybe even you're playing casually it opens up more avenues getting more points that is to do more things you know maybe you can because of more points you'd be able to try out a different weapon from the box and pack a bunch of to tier two and maybe ultimately decide you don't want it and get another weapon all before round 20 but yeah let's relax on that conversation now we've touched on the main points there about the weapon rarity about the point system i would say another thing we can talk about really quickly is the field upgrades and we'll talk about the augments in just a second but the field upgrades i think the field upgrades are cool they're fun i love the augments that go along with them same with the perks i think the perks are cool or fun and fun the same old perks that we're used to but i really want to see more field upgrades and i understand that we have the new one i think it's called dark flare but it's pretty horrible <laughs> like it's really not that good and i really have no reason to use it in my games and regardless even if it was the best field upgrade ever just the fact that we're seeing energy mine ether shroud healing aura frenzied guard back again it's not necessarily a bad thing and i'm happy that they come in conjunction with a brand new field upgrade but i want to see more i would love to see more so hopefully and i am anticipating within the dlc cycle of this game we will be getting more field upgrades just to keep stuff more fresh same thing with the bosses right and i think i was talking about bosses before i don't even know if i finished but i was talking about the boss spam this is this is just kind of like a raw slightly unedited <laughs> talk about black ops 6 zombies so let, let me actually pick up on that real quick i don't think i finished um yeah i don't like the boss spam and the level of tediousness it provides on higher rounds but i wanted to finish by saying that i love the brand new boss they added in the game i love the amalgam it's awesome it's creepy tons of arms it could suck you in it's got different mechanics it's already made for some really cool and funny clips on social media that's exactly everything you may want from a new boss in cod zombies and i'm very grateful we have it and that's what i want to see more of i don't want to see the mimic in this game i don't want to see the disciple in this game i don't want to see the tempest in this game from cold war zombies again we probably will but i don't want to see that i want to see new bosses that were awesome like the amalgam that is an awesome addition to this game i forgot to mention that i have to definitely give them credit there because i am so appreciative that we have a new boss mini boss that is obviously we have a new boss fight but i'm talking about the mini boss also yeah just to touch on it really quickly again the perks are pretty much the same we have melee macchiato i would say melee macchiato is a cool perk i don't think it's as great as it could be but i haven't used it with all the augments yet so i'm not going to say it's great or it's horrible i just think it's cool that you could kill zombies semi easily on higher rounds just by punching them if you have melee macchiato melee macchiato with your gun butt so that's cool i just don't see the need to go out there and get it like juggernaut or speed cola right there's no instantaneous pro to having this perk which i do think is a flaw and if they add perks into the game in the future which i'm anticipating fully that they will i'm hoping that they can really give us that oomph. hopefully the microphone picked up that sound effect but hopefully it gives us that power that real reasoning to getting the perk but yeah overall i think this the same thing as cold war zombies i don't love the fact that perks increase 
so much with each purchase. I like the standard perk pricing from the past, but considering that it is in this game, I will then circle back to the possible increased amount of points that you get per zombie kill as a solution to lots of things in this game, including opening up all the doors, getting all your perks, pack a punching. There's lots of ways, and again, not the OG point system, just slightly increasing the amount of points you get with the current point system. There's lots of benefits that come along with that to again reduce the level of tediousness in the game. All right, so we touched on a lot of bases, but I think it's very important now to touch on augments. Very simply put, they are fantastic. I'm not going to say much about them because there are just so many different ways you can go. Like they do greatly add to your gameplay. It's not that they necessarily change your gameplay, but they add to your gameplay. Just to give you a small example with Juggernog, there's an augment that allows you to have an extra 50 HP with Jug. So if you buy Jug, instead of having 250 HP, you'll have 300. And augments benefit you in a bunch of different ways like that with literally every single thing in the game from ammo mods to perks to feel upgrades. Augments are fantastic. And I love the fact that you can be going for different things in this game and modify your augments based off of them. Meaning if you're going for a high round, you may possibly change. And even dependent on the high round strategy, if you're camping or training, you're going to change the augment you're running. If you're doing an Easter egg, you're going to change the augment you're running, possibly, right? For those more advanced players. I love the fact that it adds another level of diversity and variability to the gameplay. These are essentially the upgrades from Cold War Zombies, and I can't say I love the way they've done leveling with augments in this game, and I don't really know if I do like them better than the upgrades in Cold War Zombies, because once you had them in Cold War, you just had them, and you had all the abilities. But I think, in a sense, that not having all abilities at every every single point in time, I think that helps to ground you a little bit. And that in itself adds to the level of difficulty, right? Because you have to choose between what you want in your specific game. Obviously you already have augments set and you can never touch them and they give you those abilities if you want for eternity, once you have them unlocked and you actually set them. But I'm saying for that more advanced user that may change the augments based on what they're doing in their game. I do like the fact that you have to make a decision and that could increase the, the difficulty level. It could also decrease the difficulty level. Cause like I said, you can optimize and or change your augments based off of what you're doing, but that also comes with a compromise. And really the compromise is that you're drawing back from said item that you have, meaning if you add a jug augment, you're not necessarily withdrawing any ability of jug, whatever augment it may be. You're just choosing to not have a different ability. Whereas in Cold War, if you had the upgrades, you had every single upgrade, right? You didn't choose between tier one, two, three, four, or five. You had every single upgrade. So this adds to the level of difficulty in a sense, and it adds to your overall experience. It adds to your level of fun as well. I just wish you earned them a little bit more quickly. But yeah, like I said, there's not too, too much you can say about augments. They're pretty much the upgrades from Cold War Zombies. They're fun. They allow variants. Cool stuff. Now, one of the last things we can talk about, unless I can think about anything else. Well, actually, I did think about something else. We'll talk about that first. Zombies weapon kits are back. Now, they're done via the loadouts, and I don't love the way that you have to jump through hoops to get to them and set your zombie builds, but they're called zombie builds in this game, and you can customize them within your main menu and set a zombie build just like you could in Black Ops 3 zombies in your weapon kits and Black Ops 4 zombies even. You can set your custom attachments and camos and variants and have that whenever you bought a weapon off the wall or got it out of the box, that would be the version of the weapon you got in game. That's available in Black Ops 6 zombies. And we had an iteration of that in Cold War zombies, but it came much later on and you had to select the blueprint after getting the weapon in the game out of the box or off the wall, which is just weird to me. So I like the way they do that in this game better and I'm so happy it's back. Great, great stuff by Treyarch once again there. But I just wanted to mention that because that could easily be overlooked and that is a fantastic feature especially for those of you who are going to be using different weapons in game and not just going to be using your starting weapon and or may even be taking chances on the box like we talked about earlier having a custom version of every single weapon in the game is great so you can get an lmg for example and you may have made it lighter and added your camos and added a certain scope to it via the menus and you don't have to ever touch it again you could just get it out of the box pack a punch it and that's the version you want and you're good but yeah wanted to mention that real quick now unless i can think of anything else this this will be the final thing and we will be talking about gobblegums right off the bat i loved the fact that gobblegums were back when black Ops six zombies was announced i still love the fact that gobblegums are back now that black Ops six zombies is out i can say that i am turning into a degenerate gambler in a sense by loving <laughs> the animation on the screen when you get a gobblegum i love it so much i wanted dr monty's factory to come back in some kind of way obviously it wouldn't be dr monty's factory it would be something new but i think it's awesome i i love the way they do this new system that's it they we skipped the bs 
FPS, right? You don't need to earn this currency and this, that, the other thing. You play zombies and on your screen, it spins the damn gobble gum for you and that's it. Bang, done, you're good. You know what you got. There's no guessing. Now, what we still don't really know as a community and I don't think there's really any answer to it other than you just play and you earn randomly. We don't know an exact premeditated, I'll say, way to get gobble gums. Meaning if you want to just go and gobble gum grind, there's not really a way to do it other than just playing, which is, I get it. You know, it's, it's cool. But if I want to grind out maybe one day just for gobble gums, I just wish there was a better strategy or idea on how to do it. This way I can come up with a strategy to get more gums. Meaning maybe every single game on round 10, once you got to round 10, you'd get a gobble gum. That would be cool because then people would be speed running to round 10 all day to earn themselves gobble gums, right? Then maybe there's an off chance that you even get one around five. So I do wish there was a more telling way of how you got, got gobble gums. Like for example, when you exfil on certain rounds and maybe what round 15, 20, 25 or whatever, somewhere around those points, if you exfil at certain rounds, you earn guaranteed whimsical gobble gums. So if they were to just add maybe every single milestone, how I believe it was in Cold War Zombies that you would get a guaranteed, you know, kind of crystal to upgrade your perks and whatever you can upgrade in the game. I wish there was a guaranteed way that once you got to any exo round, like round 11, round 16, round 21, I wish that was a guaranteed gobble gum every single time. And then on top of that, maybe some other things can trigger it, but really just by playing, you'll earn them randomly. And from what I've seen and from my own experience, the earn rates on gobble gums, though I do like the system and I love also, I got to say that I love that you can hold three at a time. I think that works out fantastically. I think that's a solution to give people more choice when they're playing. It doesn't impede on your screen like it did in Black Ops 4 Zombies with the Elixirs. It gives you less options than Black Ops 4 Zombies because you can only have three at a time, but it allows you to even strategize a little bit. It's, it, you know, you can make some decisions with gobble gums. You can store some gums and do things in certain sequences based off of the gums that you obtain in game, which I again love and think is really cool. Either way, I'm going to digress here and just say that I've seen a lot of people say that the gobble gum earn rates aren't exactly what they'd want. And like I said, there's no telling way to know when you're going to get a gobble gum. So I think we need to see some kind of minor buff on the gobble gum earn rate front. Having this double gums weekend over this last week prior to recording this video has been fantastic. I enjoyed every second of it. And I'm not saying that the earn rate has to be that drastic because I quite literally got a gobble gum in one game on round three, seven, and 10. And that again was fantastic. And I earned three gums on one of those rounds and it was great. But just having it be a little bit more frequent would be nice. And yeah, other than that, I don't think there's really much more to talk about. I guess one quick thing we can talk about is the traps. I love that they added the tentacle trap in Terminus. I think that's really cool. They also added a new trap within Liberty Falls. I forgot the exact name of it. I think it's the Dark Ether Field Generator. I love the fact that the traps are also a part of the Easter egg. That's again, going along with the theme of embedding Easter eggs within each map. I really do think that they've done a fantastic job with Black Ops 6 Zombies. I don't think anyone could argue that whatsoever. And you can argue whether or not it's better than Black Ops 3 Zombies launch, Black Ops 4 Zombies launch, Cold War Zombies launch, argue whatever you want. But I think without a doubt, this game has set a fantastic foundation that even right now, if they were to keep unchanged, would still be great. But if they were to make some minor changes to that foundation in some of the ways that I may have proposed in this video, oh boy, I think this could easily beat out Black Ops 3 Zombies without a doubt, especially if these DLC maps within this game are going to be to the level of Terminus because the holy crap, again, Terminus is insane. There's a side Easter egg for everything on top of the amazing main quest and boss fight. But yeah, that's it. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. I'll talk to you guys later. Stay, stay tuned for some awesome videos. And by the way, really cool guide coming up soon. I'll see you later. Take care of your meatballs.